Hi, Ron. Hello, Jim. How are you, sir? Very good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks so much. I want to tell you what an honor it is to uh, speak with you, and, and you're so gracious to spend some time. It's much appreciated, sir. It's my pleasure. Um, it's, it's funny. Fun. A few weeks ago, uh, I was flipping through the channels, and Tremors I'd seen a couple times, or many times. And so I watched a little bit, and I was busy. But the real strange thing is, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, I, I watched City Slickers, just because I hadn't seen it in so long, and I'm not just blowing smoke, I was just coincidentally seeing that a couple of weeks ago. And my biggest um, feeling about films is um, sometimes they will almost always speak to you on a visceral level, and you don't know why. And in right. your estimation, what was the magic in a bottle with City Slickers when you came about the script and decided to do it? It's something that um, is magical as far as I'm concerned. What are your thoughts on that? Well, um, I, when I was making it, I didn't think it would be the big hit that it was, actually. I, I, didn't, I didn't think that women would like it that much because it was, there were very few women characters, really. You know, only right. a few. And... Uh, what surprised me was that the women really drove that movie more than any any part of the audience, and they really loved it. So that that was a surprise. It, for me, what what made me want to make that movie so badly was what the real story was with Billy Crystal's character and his midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. I, I had I was young, but I had already gone through a midlife crisis. Right could relate to that character so much and just the feelings that he was going through. And, and I, well, I read the script um, before it was offered to me and I just, I loved it. I, I, I wanted to do it more than anything. And I, I, uh, I just could, I could really empathize with Billy's character and also I wanted to tell that story because it was personal to me. Yes. And it was so Billy. I mean, casting, a friend of mine used to say, or still says, um, casting is 90% of the success of your movie. And what what was the, was Billy always in mind for you? Or um, can you talk to me? Bruno Kirby, I'm a huge yeah. fan of Bruno Kirby. And I like... Um, yeah. The cast, the, the, the three leads were incredible. What was and it about Bruno, Billy that... Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's the magic, and they they pulled the, the, the symmetry or the, the the connection was amazing, and I I'm guessing they had fun making it. And what did you see in Billy? How soon did he come on? He was on before me, actually. It was uh, Billy's idea for a film. Okay. It was right after when Harry Met Sally was made. Uh, Billy was watching. Uh, TV, like a news thing about, and they had a cattle drive okay. kind of vacation thing <laughs> featured. And he, he thought that would be a fun, fun thing to do. So then uh, uh, he had this idea. Um, Kat, he was had his deal at Castle Rock, which had right. made when Harry Metalli was his good friend, Rob Reiner's company. So um, it was his perfect home right. and uh they hired Lowell Gantz and Babalu Mandel mm -hmm. to write the mm -hmm. script who did an amazing job with the script I thought it was it's so simple in 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 the way it is structured it really and is. you just look at the first act second act third act and it just makes total sense I mean it's so it's so hard to do such a simple looking right. thing <laughs> and make it so and, appealing still yeah you yeah. know but from a, from a screenplay point of view it was pretty direct yeah very you know, abc yeah. i mean almost like a film school kind of thing where if you're going to write a three a three act structure yeah, yeah. it was right but that's there. I, I, I feel like lola and babalu are so gifted in being able to simplify something so much but make it uh you don't you're not aware of it when you're watching the movie you're just enjoying the characters that they 
you know, really nailed on the on the page, and the whole uh, the, the 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 whole story of of Billy's um, yeah. journey. As much as I liked Billy's journey, I thought Bruno Kirby's was a little dark in a wonderful way. I thought yeah. that yeah. you know, in that um, I think it it evened it out, and um, and I'm sorry, the actor for the other character, Daniel Stern. Yeah. Daniel um, Stern, yeah. Those were fairly dark. Uh, I don't want to say dark, but, you know, those were not, Billy's seemed much more um, lighthearted than, say, some of those, like Bruno Kirby's could have gone right. dark, and I think he did a little bit talk about his childhood, but what about yes. casting Bruno? I think that, um, you know, his pedigree was the godfather, uh, and yes. what did you like about him, that that he brings a certain gravitas to a comedy? You know, yeah. Do you agree with me he, that there's there was some serious messages between his character and Daniel Stern's? Definitely, definitely, and and I I was definitely I I mean I, I was wanting it to be a funny film mm -hmm. and play the comedy, but I I more than anything I wanted people to relate to the characters and and feel for their stories what they were going through, mm -hmm. and all three of them are going through a lot and on this on this cattle drive and it's it's something i mean it, it could have been a film that took place in diners in new york right and talking with these three characters and what they're going through but it just added a whole nother level to have them on this cattle drive right and um you mentioned diner i know you didn't mention the movie but i love that movie did it yes, have it any was. influence on you in your career? I mean, as a as a viewer, oh, yeah. um, this yes. it was Barry Levinson, right? Barry Levinson, yeah. All of Barry Levinson's movies have had an influence on me, definitely. Yeah. Um, and Diner was it was wonderful. It was a masterpiece in some ways. I think yeah. that again, the casting there, Daniel Stern again, yeah. Did you look? Did that. you hire Daniel and did you hire um, Bruno? Did you bring well, them yes. on? Were they attached already? Yeah. No, they neither one was attached, and um, and Bruno uh, was certainly somebody we talked a lot about because he'd been uh, he was friends with Billy Crystal, but also um, Harry Met Sally, yeah, or been Harry Met Sally right. before that, so it made a lot of sense. And but we talked we talked about a lot of actors before we went to Bruno, and but Bruno just like you say he brought a lot of um range to that it part is. and and another so, actor may have played it too light and you know right. you fixated on that scene and the when they're on the horse and about his when and he said that day, was the best, the best, best day. day yeah or, best day and worst day, day. Yeah. that yeah. was nice writing and and i felt that, that daniel schwartz i mean daniel stern that was a hell of a role too. I mean, that could have been played. I find that those two evened out the comedy with Billy's. Like, I don't see Billy's as um, his character as tragically. Uh, I see him as a you know kind of a humorous um, you know life's crisis. But the other two were dealing with some serious issues. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. And Hannah, yeah. did you? I was talking to David Ward recently um, of Major League. Did yeah. you know he wrote the sting? Oh yeah. That was I didn't know that, that the was... first time. I called him back yeah. and apologized because the sting to me is a masterpiece. And I said, David, were... I'm so sorry, I'm so embarrassed. Because I wanted to talk to him. I did a book last yeah. year on uh baseball book. I'm big on baseball. Oh yeah. He helped me out with major league and it was shot here, a lot of it. And um what I'm getting at is Charlie Sheen and Berenger had worked on Platoon. And do you think there's something to be said with chemistry like that? Like you said, uh, Bruno and Billy had worked together. Yeah. Does that give you some degree of confidence going into a film? Definitely. I mean, it, it's, it helps. I don't, it doesn't, it, the same magic doesn't always occur though. Right. It's based on the writing and also the uh, circumstances of that production and where each actor is. But I, it's great to know that they have something between build, them already. Yeah, to build off of. Yeah. And, and, and their relationship was kind of similar in Harry Met Sally. I felt that, you know, they had that same kind of 
yin and yang to each other. And uh, yeah. I found that very appealing. Jack Palance is something that, how did Jack come about? And and God rest his soul, what a great performance. And I know he won the Oscar for it, but could you have foreseen that while you were shooting that, you know, there's one of my favorite films is uh, The Pope of Greenwich Village. And uh -huh. um, my brain is, as I get older, um, who played? Yeah. You know, she, she when uh, she won the Oscar, she was only in the film for four minutes, and sometimes yeah, yeah. Um, Geraldine Page, yeah. and and I think that with Jack, um, he leveled out all of it. It, it was an amazing, you know, f quad quad, if you will, with the two guys, Billy, and then he had this whole other dimension to him. So I guess what I'm saying, you know, when I talk to directors, I'm always looking for that film that you know, might have escaped. And City Slickers certainly didn't escape the limelight. I'm just saying that I'm always looking for that thread that um, and the why it meant something to me. I think Jack was a big reason why I liked that film. Can you talk about his casting a little bit and and your relationship yeah. with him on the set? Yeah, I, Jack was um, incredible. And I, I was a little intimidated by him, actually. To be honest, I, mm -hmm. I at first didn't know if he was the right person for the role. Really? I just, and <laughs> we did actually go to somebody else first. Uh, Can Charles you tell Bronson. me who? Who? Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson? Bronson? Oh, I think you made Bronson. the right choice. Bronson, I like Charles, Bronson. but I don't think his Bronson. range was... Bronson was um, uh, offended to even be offered the part of a, a character who dies halfway through the film. Why does that so, not surprise me? It doesn't <laughs> surprise me. Well, I mean, I, the only time I think of Bronson is, yeah. I mean, is Dirty Dozen. Yeah, and yeah. that always comes yeah. back to me. But I, I mean, he was a, I don't think his range was very long, uh, wide, but yeah. I think Jack um, offered it. I really cared about. Yeah, he cared about the character. He cared about the film. Um, on the very first day, the first mm -hmm. scene, I had a little problem with him. Mm -hmm. I was shooting his opening of the his character's entrance into the film mm -hmm. as his first scene, and there were we have all these characters in a corral, and Jack rides up and lassos a yep. cowboy. It's working for him and and throws a knife at his crotch. Mm -hmm. I remember. And, and he said, uh, make sure you that doesn't happen again. <laughs> Billy says, yeah. And and Jack's supposed to look over at him. So after the rehearsal, Jack didn't look at him at Billy. So I there wasn't, I couldn't, the joke wasn't gonna work. I because Billy then says, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought we were on the same side. <laughs> and and so I, I said to Jack, uh, Jack, after Billy's, yeah, if you could just give him a glance. He said, I don't do glances. I said, well, the, just a look will do. And he just sort of went off. He he was just, he, 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 he said, ah, oh, this damn movie acting. I just we went crazy. A little bit and the whole cast and crew just kind of backed out of the corral leaving jack and me alone and we had a little talk for a while right he said he was gonna walk off the film i i said i think there's a whole generation that would like to get to know you jack i wow. hope you stay with it you came and with he, that on the spot you just came up with that that's incredible you saved he, the day with that one cast and crew came back I didn't dare rehearse it again. We shot it. He looked at the right time. <laughs> the joke worked well. And later in the day, I was sitting next to Jack and he took his cowboy hat off and he hit my leg and said, first day jitters. Interesting. And interesting. And from then on, we got along like just the closest, greatest actor director relationship. So and funny I you should say you, that because mind you, we think of these actors as such you know strong individuals and a lot of them are pretty in, not insecure but very sensitive and that first day he had a, i don't know what his most yeah. recent gig was prior to that i can't imagine it being too recent 
But isn't that interesting to think that he was just a guy that may have been a little insecure, but at the same time, he sent a message to the rest of the cast that was perfect for his character, you know, scare the shit out of everybody. And, <laughs> and then for the rest of the film, even, you know, Billy Crystal kind of, because when there's a fuse on somebody and you don't know who's going to light it, I think that's great for that character because you never knew when he was going to explode. And that was the beauty of his character. Yeah. And I, I, I loved working with him. He painted me a picture at the end of the uh, <laughs> film. He's that sensitive he's guy. Been, yeah. And I, I ended up making his last film before he died. Which, which was one was that? Great to work with him. It which... was one for, it was for television. It was, um, Back when we were grownups, it was called okay. uh, with uh, Blythe Danner and sure. uh, Peter Fonda and Faye Dunaway and Peter Riegert and great wow. cast. And, Peter Riegert uh, is one of my favorites. Um, when he did, um, um, when he was on the beach, God, is it, I'm not, you're probably the same age as me, but uh, what, what was the last, <laughs> local hero? Local hero was so great. But in Lancaster that. was incredible. But I think that that showed me a side to Riegert. And I loved him in Crossing Delancey. I thought yeah. that was an amazing film as well. But we keep bringing up these amazing actors. But Peter Riegert is not a roll off your tongue actor. I don't know a lot of people that would know his name. But remember that performance in The Sopranos okay. that he did? Oh, yeah. Amazing. Great. Amazing yeah. performance in that. So getting back to Jack. Um, there's no way you can't be honest and say you thought he was going to win an Oscar for that. No, I did not think he was going to win an Oscar, but it was so nice. It what do you so think great. they saw in that performance? I mean, the whole thing, I mean, the the whole Oscar show was helped by his uh, one arm push ups and yep. everything else. Yep. It was amazing. I, that was what thirty years ago. How long ago was that? Yeah, ninety three ish. No, it was 91. It 91. Came out. And, so the, and the audience was 92. Can I oh, ask, yeah. um, you know, I'm always... And Billy was the host of the Oscars that year, and he ran with that <laughs> and was so funny. I mean, Billy <laughs> is so gifted at just impromptu stuff. Sure. And he was just coming up with stuff, all the whole show about Jack. <laughs> right. I, I got to believe he had a certain amount of respect for the man. And and did Jack ever say anything to you afterward? Like, thank you for, did he thank you? Oh, yeah. He, yes. He was incredibly gracious. We had the, I, the best relationship. I, I'm so glad. It was a little amazing the way it started out <laughs> to where it ended up. But I got to tell you, a lot of relationships that last are start out that way. They start out with a little adversarial. And, and, and I mean that in my personal life, that to me, it's a squaring mm -hmm. off. He wanted to see what you were made out of, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. And you were young, and it's probably figured, I, you know, and, and I think that, let's face it, a lot of young directors aren't up to the task, especially with someone who had the experience he had. But Billy was kind mm -hmm. to you as well, I'm hoping? Oh, yeah. He was yeah. great. I still, I, I, yeah, I, I, I still talk to him, and oh, he, great. he's great. He's a fantastic guy. What were the biggest challenges on that shoot for you? Uh, it must be hard dealing with horses and hard dealing with uh, yeah, the, the very first. The very first scene we were shooting was a, a, a discussion between the three characters as they were driving the herd of cattle. So we we have our couple hundred head of cattle. Mm -hmm. Got like ten cowboys who were mm -hmm. all, all kind of getting the cattle going. And we had our cameras going and the cowboys, the real cowboys getting the cattle going with our three characters right behind them, right. pushing them along, having their little diner discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, we get the cowboys riding out, I call action. And we, by the end of the shot, there's not one cow left in the shot. They start turning around and going backwards, <laughs> going off side, that way, that way. And I, that first shot, I just thought, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? I mean, this is over. Crazy. 
Yeah. <laughs> is there a point in the film where you just, you know, you think about Jaws being a, you know, horrific experience? Did it ever get to a point where you're like, you really said, wow, I don't know how I'm going to pull this off? And I'm, I'm just speaking of any film, like, holy cow, I'm really knee deep in this one. Was there ever a time when you thought this may be a little bit beyond me? Uh, after that first day, I felt, I, I, I felt we were going to be okay. Okay. It was, but that first day, I, I definitely was thinking, oh my God, how are we going to do this? But you'd come because off the front. Most, most, most uh, films, even, and just even in terms of cowboy movies, you don't have a lot of riding horses talking. <laughs> Usually they come to a stop and they talk <laughs> or they get off the horses and talk. Yeah. And that this film was a lot of riding and talking. And that was something that, I discovered, well, I understood why they ne didn't do that in cowboy mm -hmm. movies usually, because it's very hard well, to get the horses going and, at the, and stay together, the camera going with it and everything else. It's crazy. I remember seeing the making of Unforgiven where uh, Morgan Freeman and, and Clint were on ladders at one point, you know, because did you have to do that or did you shoot them straight on horses? You just put them on horses. And mm -hmm. we tried various It worked techniques. really well. I mean, it really they held the the frame. We tried we tried uh a camera operator, a steady cam operator riding backwards on a horse uh to do it. We tried dollies, uh, we tried uh vehicles moving with the horses, and we finally got a, a technique that worked. Yeah. But it took a while to actually, you know, get get it working. <laughs> So was Tremors your first uh, big budget production in terms of film? Yes, I know that you've was done my education. That... I'd done educational films before that, and and uh, and children's television. Yeah. And so Tremors was way above anything I'd done before. So why do you think they trusted a young man with it? I'm guessing you're in your 30s or something, but that's a lot of money. I I. They they didn't necessarily trust me. <laughs> I I would say, I mean, they uh, Universal really liked the script, and I was part of that script. Uh, I I didn't re re write the screenplay. Uh, Maddock and Wilson wrote the screenplay, mm -hmm. but I I I developed it with them for five years. Wow! Yeah. Uh, before we got it to Universal and got the go ahead. But it was, and and to be honest, I'm kind of a quiet director. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to be the center of attention. I like observing. I like watching the, the action and, and giving suggestions to actors, but I'm not like a big personality. Mm -hmm. And so our first meeting at Universal was with the chairman, the president, the vice president, and they, we had a meeting because they liked the script. Yeah. And then uh, it, it was with uh, Brent Maddox, Steve Wilson, and myself, the, the writers. And I think Gail Ann Hurd was there, who was an executive producer on it. Mm -hmm. And... And then we got word back after the meeting that they just, they thought that I was so quiet. Mm. They didn't, they, they, they said, uh, gosh, do, can Ron do this? Cause I'd only done you know, children's television before. So they, they didn't know what right. I was capable of. And so, but Tom Pollock was the chairman of Universal. He had been the former uh, lawyer for, attorney for George Lucas. And he said, well, George Lucas would have acted similarly in a meeting. So let's give him another chance. Right. So uh, the vice president of uh, the company who was a big supporter of the film, Jim Jacks, called me in to his office and said, okay, what they really want is you to jump around and just be really big. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and so I, 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 I just jumped around and was really? a big, meeting and <laughs> and they said yes, we'll go forward with it if you can get one of these actors 
you know, if we can agree on an actor who can support the movie. So you know, uh, uh, I think Kevin uh, Bacon has a, a huge range. I, I mean, I know he, he, he <laughs> was he, um, and then um, I, Fred. Fred, was the other guy. Fred uh, what's his last name? Fred Ward. Yeah. What did you, Fred was in The Player, which I thought he did a really nice job. What had he been in prior to that that you impressed you? Do you remember? Uh, yes, I, I there was a I I remember the movie. I can't think of the title, unfortunately, right this second. But he, he was seems to have a, a range to him as well. You know, he does oh he, he, he's he, scary, and then at the same time he has the comedic chops. Yeah, he was in the um, Philip Kaufman's movies. A couple of them that were so good. Um, uh, the, the astronaut movie. Oh, he was in the right stuff. Yeah, right stuff. I forgot he about was, that. He was in um, a love story that was incredibly beautiful that Phil Kaufman did. So he, I mean, he had he, he had the range of Fred Ward and just the reality of him. Right, just such a real person, and um, like Palance, both of them were ex boxers. Right. And, really? And so both, yeah, they both had boxed. That's and so both of them had sort of a real kind of fighting spirit and kind of just a great energy. Right. Uh, without being really having to push too hard. They both could just sit back and just be incredibly real. And I thought the on-screen chemistry was amazing between him and Bacon. And Bacon is a, he's kind of a sleeper. I know he was in Diner. It's funny how these conversations tend to come around. <laughs> yeah, and, and Daniel Stern and that. And I I don't know, um, and the directors I've talked to, some of it's happy, you know, as Bob Ross would say, a happy accident. And um, others just, you know, coming from your um, educational film background what um it just seems to me so diametrically opposed to a feature film and i don't mean that in any other way than you just think of you know like your after school specials or whatnot but was that something did you look at some of the early stuff as paying your dues and you always wanted to go into feature films or was it just the way it worked out i wanted to go into feature films from the very beginning but i didn't have um or television i was trying to get into television as well that I didn't have uh, um, just access or whatever. Mm -hmm. I did, I, I when I was in college, I made uh, a film uh, during the summer between semesters that was on hang gliding. Hmm. And I didn't realize it when I made it, but it was the first film on hang gliding. So Paramount released it. And so I was 19 wow. and I had a film released by Paramount, a non-theatrical, you know, uh, short. And I learned about this short film market. And that's how I saw, well, I could make a living in this wow. market. And I, so I, st I, I started doing that just to be able to survive mm -hmm. while I was pursuing, continuing to pursue, um, features but I it it took me a long time I mean it took me 15 years to get into features yeah. but it, it gave me incredible um amount of experience having done 100 short films wow. and and that's a lot of films longer of longer films. films as well some for children's television like uh Beverly Cleary's book The Mouse and the Motorcycle I made for ABC and, and things and it was actually that that film, um, The Mouse and the Motorcycle, that allowed Hollywood to see me as a filmmaker mm -hmm. because it got a Peabody Award mm -hmm. and an Emmy nomination. So, I mean, it was really the awards that came to that film that then opened up the possibilities. I got a, I was going to do, my first film I was going to do was Hocus Pocus. Sure. Halloween film. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, I didn't, I didn't understand the business that well in terms of development and how I, t I sort of turned a go movie into a development project <laughs> by just 
by wanting to change the script somewhat and and uh and by the time it's tremors happened ha came along before um the other film so right. hocus pocus was something that i ended up not making you see but, but it was because, because uh i had directed a talking cat in mouse and the motorcycle <laughs> disney thought well he can work with talking cats and we have one in hocus pocus <laughs> I'm. I tend to be hard on films just because you know that's the kind of guy I am. I just tend to get very technical on things I like and things I don't like. But I'm not a snob. I like everything from you know Jean de Florette to Paul Blart, and and mm -hmm. I, I never know why. I don't know why, and I guess that's part of the beauty of all this. Like I have a film you may or may not have heard of. If you put a gun to my head and said, "What's your favorite film?" It might be With Noel and I. Have you are you familiar with With Noel and I? I I remember it. I I don't I don't know if I've ever seen it, but Bruce I remember Bruce Robinson, it, yeah. just a coming of age film in the '60s, and yeah. I don't know why. I don't try to diagnose. I just know that you know. There's another film. Uh, there's just films I don't know why, and perhaps part of the beauty is not knowing why. It kind of creates. I like reading the book after I see a movie. I'm really weird that way because I like to think, see what they changed. I like to see you know, the integration of two characters into one if they had to and et cetera. But um, one thing I was curious about, um, you did a lot of episodic television and what's it like to go into the set of of um, Grey's Anatomy or ER? I think you did Grey's Anatomy, right? Did you do Grey's Anatomy? What's it like to walk onto a set like that with established actors, established in that particular storyline? Is that particularly challenging to come in to to a show like that and and I've always been curious what that relationship is like walking onto a set well, that's I, been established for years I've I've um really enjoyed television I like the challenge of it because I get to and and I change uh tone and style mm -hmm. monthly so every every go time I go out it's totally different which I mm -hmm. I really enjoy and so it keeps it fresh and interesting the actors my very first episode I did was um one of Monk oh. and I had I had heard that uh television directors you know don't really have much uh to do with the acting because the characters you know, are established and the actors know them so well, better than you do. And I, on that first episode, um, getting to know Tony Shalhoub, mm -hmm. he, he said, I want direction, please give me direction because I live with this all the time. I want a fresh perspective right. Right. that you can give me. And I, and I loved working with Tony. And, and that is the way I've approached all of my uh, television directing going as just somebody who has some new ideas maybe to offer. Yeah. And if you, um, I mean, it does require a lot of research on a film, on a show like Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. I, I have, before I direct, I want to watch a lot of episodes. Mm -hmm. So I really understand where these characters are, what they've gone through and and so it takes a lot of research for but also chron uh, chronologically you have to know where they're at with that character at that point i mean because I, it's obviously so like a film you get an hour and a half to get to know that character which is why i love streaming now better call saul i think is the best television show ever produced i just oh good i it's just you like it as well yeah i mean it's from so a writing perspective i thought they ended it well too i mean sopranos was still kind of eh. I don't know how they ended it. And I thought Ozark screwed the pooch on their ending. But Better Call Saul to me was, if you're going to take a master class in ending a series, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know. It's just, I was literally, when I watched that show, I was literally re dreading the fact that it would end every night. I was, that's that's how yeah. good it was, you know? Can I ask you what's... Yeah, great couple... characters, great, oh. great stories. There's no whole, yeah. I, I liked it a lot better than Breaking Bad, a lot better. But the, I don't know what that says about me. Maybe I just like that. And they were able to develop this guy for six years as opposed to, you know, 
any other movie yeah. where it's very difficult. What films growing up, what, what do you suppose someone meeting you for the first time would be surprised by a film you truly liked? And when I talk about, you know, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon to, uh, you know, Blazing Saddles, I love the fact that I'm not a snob, even though I appreciate good film. But I mean, yeah. like Dumb and Dumber to me is is hilarious, but I also like, yeah. you know, films that, you know, the, the, that that um, Daniel Day-Lewis does. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get yeah. into that. That's a whole psychological thing. But what are a couple of films that you think people would be surprised you liked? Well, I have the same kind of range of films that I mm -hmm. I love. I love I love films of all genres and mm -hmm. I mean two of my favorites from childhood were Dr. Shivago, <laughs> David Lean's film. And for a kid, that's a, that's quite an undertaking I, to watch that. I love I love that movie. Omar I Sharif. My, I, I we named our oldest daughter Larissa after Lara's <laughs> character. And the but also I love Mad Mad Mad. It's a Mad 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 World. Yeah. I mean, I love all kinds of movies. I grew up in the 50s watching them and these incredible scary. You grew up in the 50s? You look too young. Honest to God, yeah. you look really young. And giant insect movies. <laughs> and that's what led to Tremors and our love, all of myself and Brent Maddock and Steve Wilson's love of of movies about these <laughs> giant yeah. you know monsters because that was um, part of your that was part of your fabric and like vincent yeah. price movies dr fives when i was 10 years old at the theater i mean you know good bad or indifferent that's what i grew up with and right dr five yeah. what a crazy crazy thing <laughs> um we've only got a, this thing will cut me off in a few minutes um What's in the future? What 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 do you see yourself doing more? Uh, another film, more episodic, or what do you see yourself doing? I'm well. I'm definitely doing more episodic, but I I also love the idea of making a film. I will we'll see if something happens. I'm working on it's getting some. harder and harder, isn't it, Ron? It's not the same it's industry. It's changed. It's changed. No, but I've I, heard I, it's I, really I, different I, now that. You know, it's not even a central Hollywood anymore, from what Ron Shelton right. told me. And yeah, but at the same time, there's room for what you did again. I'd love to see more educational stuff. I'd like to see our kids more ingrained. But the phones yeah. have killed that. I mean, yeah, you know, my well, sister. You, yeah, it's, it's sad because I mean, Frank Capra, when he retired at an yeah. early age, fairly early, he went into educational films. He started making uh, films. For education billy wilder so, did no uh, frank capra oh well i consider them the same i mean aren't those two <laughs> the pinnacle of that kind they're, of they're complete best. comedy oh, i right. mean one of my films yeah. is the apartment with jack lemon and i'll go down to my grave saying jack lemon <laughs> may that's have my, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite films as well isn't that funny and, but, you know but also <laughs> the character you played in glengarry i to this moment there's that scene towards the end where he just gets so visceral. I think he's, I honestly think he's underrated in terms of the grander scheme of actors. I think, you know, they, he was appreciated, but I think that in terms of range, I don't know that there was anybody better from when you Something look like at it, part, from grumpy old men to um, that scene in Glengarry, which was Ron, yeah. you didn't have to do this. And I thank you so much for your time for it's this. Great. It's so much appreciated. Great and talking to you. As corny as it sounds, I, I, a lot I, I of love. I used to live in Milwaukee. I used to live in Milwaukee. Where? I have to. Well, let's uh, talk. I'll call you or 16, something. Yeah. Okay, 16th and uh, Wisconsin. What the hell were you doing here? <laughs> My wife was a Marquette student. Okay, okay. Um, what an honor, and I thank you. Hopefully, we can talk again. Okay. Keep in touch. Sounds Thanks, good. Ron. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nice talking to you. You too, my friend.